All right, so we pick up our story. Peter, who did not see the risen Christ, but hears news of it from the women. It's not until that evening that Peter experiences Jesus coming through that door, and they're all amazed. But they are not motivated to share the good news. Jesus says, go and meet me in the Galilee. So Peter and the disciples come to the Galilee. And Peter says, let's go fishing. Now, I don't know about you, but the power of the resurrection is something that we celebrate every Resurrection Sunday, and that to us is the seminal event. And for Peter, he doesn't go out and proclaim it to everyone. In fact, Peter is so discouraged that when he's here in the Galilee, he says, let's go fishing. And so they go fishing, and they catch nothing. A man appears on the shore and says, children, have you caught anything? No. Throw your net on the other side. They throw the net on the other side. They catch a huge draft of fish. Peter says, it's the Lord. Peter jumps off the boat, swims the shore, and finds Jesus by what the text says, an anathrakia. He is by a charcoal fire. On the charcoal fire is a fish. Now, that's interesting to me. Why do I need to know what kind of fire it is? So I did some research, and I looked it up in the text in the original Greek, where else do you find an anathrakia, or a fire of burning coals? The other place that you find a fire of burning coals is in the courtyard of Caiaphas. Jesus is in custody. Peter is by an anathrakia, and he's approached three times. I could tell from your accent that you're a Galilean. No, I never knew him, says Peter. A second time, weren't you with this Jesus of Nazareth? I swear by all gods, I never knew him. He's approached a third time. You were certainly with this Jesus of Nazareth. And then with a curse and with an oath, he denies Jesus. Now, in rabbinic tradition, the greatest offense that a tall mead or a disciple can do against his rabbi is to deny him. That's why Peter, with a resurrected Jesus, is just the embodiment of shame and embarrassment. Yes, he loves that Jesus has arisen. Yes, he loves he's alive. But now his betrayal has become so sour, his whole life is contaminated. What's interesting to me is the charcoal fire, the anathrakia, the burning coals. So, I begin to think through the text. I said, where else do I find charcoal fires? And I think about that story with Abraham. And God comes to Abraham in a vision. And God says to Abraham, I want you to get five animals. God doesn't tell him what to do with the animals, but Abraham knows what to do. Abraham cuts the animals in half. A covenant is being made, an agreement. God appears. And he appears in the form of a flaming torch, and he appears in a smoking fire pot. The smoking fire pot is what the Bedouin use to take the embers of the night before. They put it in the smoking fire pot. It has vents in it so the air can keep the coals alive, and they begin the next day's fire with those coals. So God appears as a flaming torch in a smoking fire pot, burning coals. Then I'm thinking, where else does God appear with burning coals? And I think of that wonderful passage in Isaiah chapter 6, where Isaiah says, whoa, woe is me, I'm undone, I'm a man of unclean lips. And what happens to his lips? An angel goes and takes a burning coal and purifies his lips. Could it be that burning coals Anathrakia in the Greek in the New Testament is a symbol for the presence of God. And that in the presence of God, Peter denied Jesus three times. And in the presence of God, burning coals, Jesus restores Peter three times. 
feed my lambs, feed my sheep, feed my lambs. It also helps me with this verse. Paul, Romans 12, when your enemy is hungry, feed him. When he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In so doing, you heap burning coals. So it's not God saying, hey, be nice to your enemies so you can kill them with kindness. But when you give your enemy something to drink, when you give him something to eat, you are pouring the very presence of God upon him. The very presence of God that will go to the third order to restore. Peter left the burning coals as a fully restored disciple of Jesus, and later he would become one of the leaders of the early church. Why do I need to know burning coals? I need to know burning coals because I've got to tell you, I have denied him, I have blasphemed him, I have cursed him. And he turns to me and says, George, I love you. I love you. I love you. The restoration of Peter is a story of the complete and total restoration that we receive. And the call of Paul in Romans 12 is a call on our lives to be the redemptive, restorative people of God. Not only to be a people who receive forgiveness, but a people to be a forgiving people. Not only to be a people who receive grace, but a people to, to be conduits of his grace. We all need to meet Jesus at the Anathrachia. Because in Jesus, we find the very presence of God.